All right, hi, welcome back everyone. Attorney Steve Vondran, welcome to the final video for 2023. First off, I wanna thank you guys all for all your support, watching our videos, sharing our videos, commenting, great comments that you give on our videos, ideas that you're giving us, so forth and so on. I just wanna thank you. It's been a great year, 2023. We have a lot of awesome things planned for 2024, so make sure to subscribe. You're not gonna to wanna to miss a video i got some great stuff lined up. All right, today we are talking about defamation defenses. Okay, def everybody knows what defamation is. You can't say that, you just defamed my reputation. You held me up to hatred, contempt, ridicule. You shunned and avoided, other people are avoiding me, okay, because of what you said. They're not dealing with me anymore. So you have caused me damages by one of two things, either libel, which is written, written defamation or slander which is oral okay so if you're around a group of people and you say hey you got a loathsome disease you got this you got that and it's false if it's a false statement of fact you are defaming people by slander if it's written if it's online if it's on Twitter if it's on Instagram um, Facebook and you're creating false statements of fact that is libel, it's libelous as we call it. I always think of libel as written, like a label is written, label, libel, written. All right, so let's go to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. Let's take a better look here. So um, this is an intentional tort, number one, okay? So when you go to law school, first thing you learn are the intentional torts, and this is one of them. You have to intend to defame somebody or have knowledge with substantial certainty. There has to be some level of fault. It has to be at least negligence or better. And we'll talk in a second here about public figures and public issues where you have an actual malice standard, which is a reckless standard. It's a lot higher. We'll talk about that in a second. In essence, when you're on the bar exam, defamation, an intentional false statement of fact made about a defend or made about a plaintiff, which subjects the plaintiff to hatred, contempt, ridicule. It defames their reputation. There are categories of per se, we're gonna talk about in a second, per se categories where you do not have to show damages. Okay, but just remember, this is an intentional tort. Somebody must intend it, or at least be um, in fault, at fault, not some accidental, if you accidentally type something, you go, oh my God, how'd that get posted? That will not be, that will not qualify for defamation. All right, so let's take a look at some things. I have mix here, Facebook, Meta, Instagram, Twitter, X, Mix. These are some of the places where people are defaming each other. Could be on YouTube as well. Could be anywhere. Could be in a newspaper. Could be on your blog post. Could be anywhere where you can put things in writing, okay? So here's some of the popular categories. I have over here John Doe. A lot of people think that if you're anonymous online that nobody's ever gonna catch you, ha ha. I've got, a, I got a, a secret little name nobody's gonna ever figure out. No, we can send subpoenas as attorneys. We can file John Doe lawsuits and seek early discovery. We can send a subpoena to these entities and we can find out your IP address. We can find out your name, your account information, your account history, email addresses, phone numbers, whatever you have there. Yeah, you know, of course it could be a, a false information that you're providing, but maybe not. And we can get that information. We can find out your IP address. We can then go to your internet service provider and find out what kind of information they have on you, okay? So don't think that because you're anonymous on these social media platforms that you're running under the radar. Not always true, okay? Um, let's, and we're gonna talk here mainly, I'm talking about California law. Check your state, every state is different. This is not a federal law. Defamation is not, there's not a federal defamation cause of action, so you're looking at your state laws to make sure you're checking off, meeting all the elements. But today I'm gonna to focus on something different, damage or defenses. What happens if you say, well, I didn't mean to do it. There's some defenses that you can raise on your behalf to try to defeat the claim, defeat the claim of the plaintiff. Let's go down these real quick. One, truth. Truth is always a defense. It doesn't have to be 100% true, substantially true. If it's true, if you say somebody is um, somebody has herpes and they say, well, you defame me, but it's true. It's true, you gave it to me, not, not me now, keep in mind. But if it's true, whatever your statement is, it's a defense. You're allowed to, it's First Amendment, you're allowed to speak the truth. You're also allowed to speak your opinion. As long as you're making it clear, this is my opinion. Okay, make that clear. If you're not sure, but it's what you believe, make sure that you're clearly denoting 
This is my opinion, okay? This is also a defense. Again, it's the First Amendment. Right here, First Amendment, okay? You have a First Amendment right to speak your mind, but to speak it truthfully, okay? Defamation is an exception to the First Amendment, and you could be held liable for defamatory statements. Um, no publication. To, in order to have defamation, there must be a publication of a defamatory message concerning the plaintiff. Okay, so if you're just sending a, a person, say, I hate that guy, and I'm going to send him an email and tell him so, and I'm going to lie and tell him he's the worst person, and then I'm going to accuse him of committing a crime, I'm going to do all that. If you're sending it just right to the person, there's nobody around to hear it. There's no defamatory nature to it. It's wrong, yeah, it could be wrong, morally wrong, but it's not defamatory because there's no publication. It has to be publicated to a third party who hears and understands the messages and says, wow, you know, man, I think I'm going to avoid that person. I'm going to shun that person. Ooh, man, wow. Oh, so I pity that person. Oh, my God. So no publication would be a defense, okay? I'm going to skip this one for a second. Another defense is the statute of limitations. California, we're looking at one year. So when the minute you learn about it, it's called the discovery doctrine. The minute you knew or should have known you had a claim, you need to bring that within a year. If you don't, you could have some problems here, okay? Um, consent, if somebody says, yeah, yeah, write an article about me, I'm, I'm totally fine. Yeah, you, if you wanna write that, go ahead and write that, that's fine. I mean, it's whatever, go for it. Consent is a defense to defamation. Finally, I'm gonna leave you with actual malice. And this is when you have a public figure, okay? Say you're talking about a movie star, a rock star, a politician, or somebody who thrusts themselves into a controversy, to a public controversy. There, these, these are what we call public figure plaintiffs, public issue, okay? Where you have those kinds of things, it's a higher standard for the plaintiff to prove to hold you liable. So you have cases where Donald Trump is always suing someone for um, defamation, and it's a higher standard because he's a public figure, okay? So you have to prove actual malice say he's going after a newspaper publication it's a big target of his or something online like a news channel he doesn't like something he says it's a higher standard because he's a public figure and it's probably dealing with a public issue could be either one but it's a higher standard called actual malice okay this is the new york times versus sullivan case actual malice plaintiff like that would have to prove that the defendant, the media company, the news company had knowledge of the falsity. They knew it was false or reckless disregard of the truth. Reckless disregard. Who cares if it's true or false? I don't care. Makes no difference to me. I'm saying it. In that case, you have the actual malice standard. It's a higher standard of proof. Makes it harder because we want to give uh, media publications a little more leeway. They're not always going to be right. Sometimes they want to break the news. They don't know everything that's happening, but they want to tell you kind of what they do know. This person's upset and they want to go for it and things like that. All right. A couple other things I want to talk about. Privilege. Privilege is um, a defense to defamation. For example, I have a video out. Can your lawyer defame you? Can a lawyer defame you? There's a thing called the litigation privilege. So if a lawyer is in the course and scope of litigation, and that's a pretty broad definition, you can have a privilege. Also, um, you know, judges on the bench, judicial officers, legislative officers, congressmen, congresswomen, senators, um, anybody in those types of capacities, there are privileges. So if you're ever a defendant in a defamation case, look up the privileges in your state. You may just find that one applies that you didn't even realize. Next, retraction. Now, retraction is not a defense. A retraction is when you, you tell the defendant, this is wrong. I'm going to give you a chance to fix it. This will help you mitigate your damages. If you retract, you go exactly in the same channels, one of these mixed channels maybe, and you retract. You say, apology letter. I didn't mean it. This was wrong. I retract it. It does not escape liability, but it does a lot to help mitigate the damages because you're going through and telling everyone, that's oh, not true. It's not true, I jumped the gun, or sorry, I was being stupid, or not in my right mind, okay? And finally, we have anti-slap, okay? This is really important. Anti-slap is a law that is designed to help protect free speech, okay? Because sometimes you're over here, you're over here, maybe you have a privilege, and somebody's trying to hold you liable. You can file as a defendant 
in a defamation case, somebody suing you for defamation, you can file an anti-slap motion as your first response with the court and say, prove it. Prove that you actually have the elements that you can show that I've actually defamed you. Like, you better have the evidence lined up and ready. This is why you always want to speak with a defamation attorney before you're filing your complaint, because if they file, if the defendant, the plaintiff sues, the defendant files an anti-slap motion, you lose as the plaintiff, then the judge says, yeah, that's, he's just exercising free speech. You're going to pay their attorney fees under California law, under California anti-slap law. So those are things to keep in mind, guys. I want to make it quick today. I got to go in. I got to watch the Green Bay Packers and the Vikings right now. But again, I want to thank you guys all for just an awesome year of supporting for equal access to justice, free legal education. And again, again, I look forward to seeing you guys. New Year 2024. We got a lot of great things coming. So thank you so much. This is general legal information only, not legal advice. If you find yourself in a defamation case in California and Arizona where I practice, Contact us. You know where to find us at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. I got to run. Have a great day, everybody. Happy New Year. We'll see you around the corner.